All right, folks, today I want to give you a demo on how you can use your Circuit Playground Express as a keyboard or mouse. So how to get your computer to think that this microprocessor is actually a keyboard or a mouse. Uh, I'll talk about the circuit first so you can see what I've got set up here before we get into the code. So if I look at the Circuit Playground, um, I've got a potentiometer and a, a wire lead, and that's all that I've got connected here. I've got a, one side of the potentiometer connected to ground. I've got the other side connected to my 3.3 volt power source. And then the wiper in the middle is connected to A2. And then uh, I've got this yellow one on A3. And I'm using this as a capacitive um, sensor for now, so I don't have that connected to. So that will just measure if I'm touching it or not. I'll also be using the buttons and the switch on here. All right, so that's what I've got wired up for my circuit. Um, and let's look at the code. So for the code, I'm including some libraries. I've got the Circuit Playground library, and then I've got the uh, keyboard library too, and I can do that one if I just go to um, Sketch, Include Library, and go to Keyboard. That will uh, add that library for me. I've got two uh, constants here. I'm setting a, a debounce level of 100. Um, that's for button presses, and then a threshold of 500 for the capacitive touch. And we'll look at that again in a second. In my setup, uh, I'm starting the Circuit Playground library. I'm setting the pin mode for my two buttons and the switch all to um, inputs, using the pull downs on the buttons and pull up on the switch so it's not floating. And then I'm beginning the keyboard library too. So like we start the Circuit Playground library, we start the keyboard library. And I've got a link here for the reference for the keyboard library. There's a lot more you can do with it. I'm just going to show you like the basics. Um, but if you want to do like holding down the option key and clicking a button, you can simulate that with um, the keyboard library as well. Uh, so that's the basics. That's our setup. Let's look at our loop. What have I got going on here? And this is not any kind of code you would want to do. I'm just trying to show you what's possible. Okay, so um, unlike some of the other assignments, you're going to have to take the bits and pieces of this that are useful to what you want to do and apply them with other code to get the results that you want. I'm just showing you kind of like how it's done, but not necessarily how you're going to want to do it. Um, all right, so I've, I've got a number of conditions. So the first one is if digital read C play left button. And I don't have any like equals there, right? I could do equals equals um, true, or I'm sorry, true. Uh, Cause it's when, when the button is pressed, I want to do sign, right? But this is um, implied. So in that, if it is true, I'm going to say keyboard dot right and then quote, capital D quote. So that's saying write to the keyboard as if this was a keyboard, send out the letter D uh, and that's it. And then delay debounce, right? So that's to prevent getting like an infinite string of Ds um, if someone presses and holds the button. If they hold the button longer than the debounce, which was only 100 milliseconds, I will get another D though, right? So um, that can be, Useful, right? Like you don't want a very long debounce or a very short debounce. Too short, you'll get too many key presses. Too long, you you might be playing a game where you want to hold the D key to like continue strafing to the right or something. Um, so that's the, an an option. So you have to play with the debounce there. You can also debounce one of the other ways uh, we looked at when we were doing toggle with the digital demo. Uh, that's that's an option for you as well. Um, so that's going to output the D key. So then my next one, if digital read the right button is true, keyboard right 65. So the number 65 with no quotes, that's an ASCII code for a letter, and that letter is capital A. 
So I can do the write in one of two ways. I can put quotes around the character I want to send, or I can um, give it the ASCII code. So with letters and things, this might make more sense to you. It's, it's easier to read, right? I know that this is a D. This, if I don't know that 65 is capital A, I have to guess or look it up. Um, but if you want to do things like the arrow keys, you can't type that between quotes. So you're going to have to use the numbers for um, some of the other keys. Um, so anyway, we've got A and D. Then. Then I'm going to try the, the capacitive sensor. So if I say if circuit playground dot read cap, that's the library command for reading the capacitive sensor on A3, the pin that I want. If that's greater than my threshold, um, and the switch is on as well, digitally slide switch pin, then I'm going to write a space with the dbounds. So I'm doing uh, two things here. The threshold value is because this reading is going to be kind of chaotic um, depending on the electromagnetic uh, fields around this pin. So uh, like in some environments, it could be really low, it could be medium range. I don't know. I have to kind of test it to see um, what my values are and then set my threshold appropriately which is why I have the slide switch pin here too because I want to be able to look at this perhaps um, before it happens, right? If I didn't have this in and I had my threshold wrong, as soon as I upload my code, if this is true, I could get like infinite spaces, right? And that might make actually like turning off the code really challenging um, or doing anything else on my computer really challenging because it's, it's like it thinks I'm laying on the space bar. Um, so you want to be careful when you're doing coding with the keyboard and with the mouse that you have some kind of like fail safe to prevent infinite characters streaming out, right? Uh, I might even want to add this to um, these other conditionals as well for, for safekeeping. Or I could put all of this in one larger um, conditional like this, right? If I wanted to ensure that it's only happening when the switch is flipped. That's really useful because then if I, if I do code something wrong and I'm getting an infinite stream of characters, I can flip the switch on here to turn it off so that I can use my computer. Okay. So that's, that's really, um, important. And we'll look at another example of this too. Okay, then I've got my, I'm making a variable called pot where I'm going to read uh, analog two. That's the blue one. And then if I'm saying if pot is greater than 300 and less than 400. So if it's, you know, 301 to, to 399, then I'm going to do keyboard write 215. So 215 is um, one of the arrow keys. I forget if it's left or right and 216 is the other one. Uh, so that will let me use the arrow keys left and right. I can go here um, and check that out to recall, refresh my memory here. Arrow, arrow left is 216 and arrow right is 215. And then up and down is 17 and 18. Um, so if, uh, if it's three to 400, go one way else, if, so here's a new thing. So if I say else if, I'm saying, okay, so if it's not in this range, check if it's in this range, okay? Um, so if it's four to 500, do the other arrow key and otherwise do nothing. Uh, so I can chain, I could continue doing this, you know, uh, another one, or I could just have a, an else at the very end. Like if it's not three to 500, then do something else. You know, I can keep chaining these. Uh, and so that's that's it. So those are my keyboards. I'm doing D, A, space, left and right arrows. And then uh, I've also got down here, because this was helpful to me to try to figure out um, what values I was getting here, right? I'm going to do my read cap and print that. I'm going to print a tab, so serial print slash tab. And then I'm going to do the print line with the carriage return. Oops. Um, 
the analog reading. So I'm going to look at what is my capacitance reading, what's my analog reading, so I can check those values. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so you can see that first one, my capacitance value default, I'm, not, I'm nowhere near it. It's giving me like high 300s. And then when I touch it, it goes up to 800 to 1000 when it's touched and then back down to high 300s. Um, so there's a clear um, distinction between touched and not touched but it's not precise in terms of what that val those values actually are. Uh, so that's why I want to use that high threshold. So looking at this, I'm like, well, when I'm not touching it, not near it, it's never getting up to 500. Uh, but 500 is also significantly lower than my touched value. So that's why I'm setting my threshold to 500 for the capacitance touch. And uh, checking here, if that reading is above the threshold, then I can uh, do the spacebar. Okay, so that's um, the capacitance such, then my potentiometer. I've got it cranked all the way down. As I lift this up, it will go all the way to um, 1023, right? Because that's a normal analog. If you notice with the capacitance touch, to, that's also it's going to top out I think at 1023 um, so yeah so based on the readings I got here I was able to write the rest of my code okay so then let's go over, over to a text editor just a basic text editor and see uh, what we get here so if I press the left button I get a D D D D if I press and hold I get a lot of D's I press the other button, I get A's. A, 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 A. So that debounce might even be too low. I might want to bump that up to like 200, 250, because um, it's too easy for me to get a double character there. If I um, do the capacitive touch, I touch that, nothing happens. Hmm, why? Uh, because my switch is not switched, right? So it's looking at this if, and so when I use and, both these things need to be true for this to happen. So this might be true, but the switch is not switched, so it's not doing anything. So if I switch the switch now, there we go, and touch this, now I get spaces, right? Okay, and so the, these capacitive things are, are tricky because like this whole thing is capacitive, right? And it can sense the deflection in the magnetic field even through the insulation on the wire. So even if I touch this, sometimes I'll get a space. There we go. If I touch the alligator clip, I'll get a space. So any part of that line is conductive will trigger it. If you don't want that to happen, if you just want the tip here, right, you need to use shielded wire. So you have uh, one wire that's insulated and then wrapped with a secondary sheathing of fine wires. Um, and that will block disruptions to the electromagnetic field of the wire in the core. That's very common with like um, speaker wire, uh, headphone wires, anything with audio shielded is usually the norm because you don't want any noise in your audio lines because you'll actually hear it. Uh, okay, so now let's look at our potentiometer, the last one. Give a little twist here. Okay, we're going back and forwards and back and forwards and back and forwards and we can look at the serial monitor to see those values 400s 300s 400s are going back 300s are going forwards um, or I should say uh, 400s are going to the left and 300s are going to the right so that doesn't seem quite intuitive to me I might want to switch that around uh, let me turn that down so it's off. Um, and again, uh, with all these, I might want this safety protect in there. With the pod, at least I know I can turn it down. Uh, and I was pretty confident with the buttons. I'd coded those right that I wasn't going to get an error. But still, um, best case is to use a safety like this when you're working with the big keyboard or the mouse. Because you. Uh, Worst case, you, if you get a stream of characters and you can't turn it off, you have to unplug um, your CPE to get it to stop. So that's the keyboard. All right, let's take a look at mouse. So 
Um, for mouse, I'm going to use the example. So if I go to File, Examples, Circuit Playground, Excel Mouse, that's where you can get this one. Um, and I'm showing you the, this as a, as a way to control the mouse, right? But specifically for the game controller project, I do not want you to use the accelerometer because here's all the code for that, right? And it's, it's a fairly common thing to see the accelerometer mapped to mouse. So I want you to be a little bit more creative than, than that with yours. Uh, projects. Um, so let me walk you through this one. Okay, now we've got the Circuit Playground library, the mouse library as well as wire and SPI, that's fine. Um, she's using define to declare some constant values for the x acceleration minimum, the x acceleration maximum, the x mouse range, and the x mouse scale. Okay. Uh, and the exact same thing for the Y. And we'll see how all these are used in a minute, but basically you need to take your acceleration reading and map that to a position of the mouse on the screen. Um, you may or may not have to flip the axes of this um, and you can determine that through testing as well. Then here, she's doing a linear interpolation function. Uh, so she's making her own function um, to do this mapping, okay? Uh, to make the function, she's saying float, so that means it's gonna return a floating point number type. The name of the function is lerp, and it's gonna take as its argument a float called x, a float called x0, a float called x1, a float called y0, and a float called y1. Um, so this, this is not actually um, the x and y position of the mouse. This is um, values. So this is kind of like the mapping function, right? Where we're saying, okay, here's the value we want to map. This is the minimum of the input range, the maximum of the input range. This is the minimum of the output range, the maximum of the output range, if you recall that um, from the mapping function. So, and so she's just writing her own here. And basically if X is less than that minimum, return the output minimum. If it is greater or equal than the input maximum, return the output maximum. Otherwise, so if it's in between those two values, perform this math equation, right? Given all five of those values. So that's, that's the insides of like a mapping function. Um, then we've got the setup. So setup, we're just beginning the library of the circuit playground and the mouse. And then in the loop, this is how she's dealing with safety here. So if not circuit playground dot slide switch. So that's saying read the slide switch using the library. If it's off, right, if it's off, then return to the beginning of the loop. So uh, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, so the return will just send you back here. So we'll never do any of the stuff below this if the switch um, is not. On. If the switch is on, it's going to go to the rest of this. Um, so we're going to say left first and right first. Um, read the left and right buttons. This has to do with how she's dealing with debounce on the mouse clicking. Um, we'll get to that later, but she's doing like um, like we did the previous and the current state of a button. Uh, she's saying first here. So uh, read the read the button states. Then and using a boolean type, right? Because they're on or off, they're true or false. So you can use a boolean type. Then 
some floats. We're getting the, the motion X and the motion Y from the accelerometer. And then here she's doing the um, uh, the mapping, right? So getting the, the she's got a value called X mag, which is the absolute value. So if it's a neg you know getting rid of the negative of the X and then getting rid of the negative of the Y, um, and then doing saying X mouse let that equal the mapping of the Excel minimum, the Excel maximum, and zero in the mouse range, which you will recall were defined at the very top. Same thing for the y-axis. And then here's a check for the direction, right, to go, to go left and right based on the acceleration. Um, so if um, x is negative, then, you know, take it and make it negative again. So that she's doing that because of how she wrote the, the lerp function. She needs the, the magnitude of the acceleration to be positive to do this function. Uh, and But then she's returning the, the negativity to it here if it was in that negative range, okay? So that's what's happening there. Um, then, Floor is like a um, uh, a clipping scale, right? So you're making sure that your your value is um, what is she doing here? Making it an integer value and making sure uh, it's a real number. There, basically. Um, truncating, not quite rounding, but truncating off the decimal places of the floats. And then finally, um, and again, this is, this is depending on that, that flip, whether or not the axis is flipped, we're going to do one or the other, um, but saying mouse move, the integer value of x mouse, y mouse, zero. This is the scroll wheel. So if you want to mess with the scroll wheel, you can do that too of the mouse. Uh, if the axes are backwards, you this is the other case. Do the y and then the x. Okay. And then she's doing a very, very tiny uh, debounce there. Then we get to, um, all right, left second and right second. We're reading the buttons again um, to check their their new state, if they've changed at all since we first read it before doing all this math. And so, okay, if the states are not the same, right, if not first, but yes, second, then register that as a click of the left mouse button, mouse.press, mouse left. Um, else, if it's the opposite, that's a release. So release, let go of the mouse. And then the same thing for the right mouse buttons, okay? So that's clicking and moving the mouse. Let's see what this does. Uploading. Very good. And it doesn't appear to be doing anything. I'm moving the mouse with my actual computer mouse. This is staying still. Uh, oh, what's wrong? Oh yeah, um, the slide switch. Oh no, wait, it is. It is moving. So here we go. I can rotate this around. It wasn't doing anything because it was still. If I throw the switch, it stops. Okay, and now I move this, nothing happens. That's a great, again, that's a great safety feature. I turn it back on. And I can, this is like extremely unintuitive use of the mouse. But you know, I'm, I am moving it, I'm doing something. Um, we can try clicking, make that one active. I don't know if I can click and drag, here we go. Oh God, that's terrible, <laughs> but it's possible, right? Um, let me turn that off. 
So you can you can do that. So you can control the mouse. You can control the keyboard. Um, again, for more information on both of those, check Arduino reference for keyboard and mouse. Uh, but that's the that's the basics of it. So then it's up to you how you want to change the sensors that you're using on here to make this a more interesting and creative system that works really well with the game that you've selected to control.